One of the biggest limitations of generative fill is its resolution, right? And usually it is around 1000 by 1000 pixels, which is not that much. Let's say you want to extend a decent photo. Even then, if you try to fill the gap with generative fill, you will see that quality difference. And to fix that, we released a script inside of the Piximperfect compositing plugin. And this feature was absolutely free. And with that, with one click of a button, it generated those areas piece by piece. Each piece could be 500 by 500 pixels or 1000 by 1000 pixels, it's up to you. And that resulted in a much higher resolution. But there was a problem with that. It was great for extending, but not for filling on the inside. But then again, we updated the plugin one more time, and this time we could fill on the inside. But still there was one more limitation. It could only fill squares and rectangles. But with this update, you can fill any shape, curvy, squiggly, random. You can even have a selection. All you have to do is to download the Piximperfect compositing plugin. And by the way, if you want to learn how to download and install, there is an instructional video detailed on how to do that. I've linked that in the description. Just as a reminder, this particular feature is free. So let's open up the plugin. If it's not already open, go to plugins, Piximperfect compositing and click on it. And there it opens. Let's stick it right here. Open up high res gen fill. Inside of that, once you have the selection active, you need to choose whether you want to have a thousand by thousand pixel box, 500 by 500 box. Pick that and then click on this new button. If you have been using the Piximperfect compositing plugin, you will notice the new stuff. So this button fills a selection. Let's click on that. The way it works is by making the selection transparent and then filling it box by box. Oh my gosh, just have a look at the quantity. This is just incredible. Even if you zoom in, you cannot tell the difference between the areas that have been filled and the original areas. Let us compare it with what it would look like if we had filled the whole thing at once with generator fill. Let's save this as a snapshot inside of history by clicking on this button and let's name it Pix Gen Fill. Let's go back to how it was and this time we have the selection. You want to make sure you go to window and contextual taskbar is on so you can see generative fill. Click on it, click on it. It's gonna fill the whole thing all at once. It's pretty good. It does have some artifacts. Even in the second one, it does have some artifacts here and there. Let's go with the third one. And let's also save this as a snapshot. Click on this button. This is the plain gen fill. So let's compare. When you zoom in right here, you start to see the difference. So this is the area it filled, right? So have a look at this. Look at the quality inside and the quality outside. Look at the resolution changes. So these areas are filled. Look at these outside. I'm not sure if you can see it, if YouTube is compressing it. Look at it detailed. Look at it right here, it's blurry. Even right here, look at this one. This is blurry, this is sharp. Because there's a limitation to resolution, these things are bound to happen. Now let's compare it with the Gen Fill one. Have a look at the quality of this one. You cannot even tell the difference. Let's take a look at the before and after. So here's the before. So this area is filled, right? Here's the after. Any difference between the quality of this one and this one? <laughs> no, right? You cannot even tell. Have a look at this area. So here's the before and here is the after. Look at the quality of this rock and the quality of some original rock. You don't see any resolution difference. You don't see a difference in sharpness. That is just crazy. That is a nifty feature, isn't it? And you can use it absolutely for free. The plugin has some free features and paid features, and this is one of those free features. So get it, use it. One more thing to keep in mind, if you open up the group, you will find the different pieces. So if I turn it off, you will start to see them. Have a look at it. So here's one piece, here is another piece, here is another piece. This is how we generated each area one by one. Now there is another very important button which was already there in the previous version and we need to understand the distinction between this one and this one. And that is, let's say you extended your image by pressing C for the crop tool and let's extend it just a little bit. Hit enter or return. Now you have some transparent areas. Now to fill those transparent areas, you click on this button. This is for filling a selection like we did just now. If you click on it right now, it won't do a thing. It says there must be a selection. For transparent areas, you click on this one. If there are no transparent areas, that button would not work and it tries to fill it again, piece by piece. Also, anytime you wanna cancel midway and you think this is enough, just hit the escape key and it will stop right there. You will have your group before, after. If that much is enough, you can stop right there. There's a selection active, so let's press Control or Command D to deselect. Now there's also one more new button to have a look at the before and after. 
here's the before and here is the after, after the entire generative fill movie. Just to wrap it up, the high-res gen fill feature now works with any shape, whether that shape is a selection or a transparent area. For the next new update, now we have a much cleaner section management. You might notice the eye icon next to each section. Right now, high-res gen fill is open. If you click on the eye of, let's say, arrangement, high-res gen fill automatically collapses. So you don't have a lot of things open. If you click on the eye of perspective, perspective is open and everything else is closed. If you click on the eye of chroma key, only chroma key is open and everything else is closed. If you want multiple sections opened at once, just click on the heading. So let's say you click right here, not on the eye, right here on the hairbrushes. Right now, chroma key and hairbrushes, both of them are open. If you click on arrangement right here, not on the eye, see, everything is open. Now let's say you just want perspective. So click on the eye of perspective, only perspective is open and everything is closed. Now it goes further than that. If you hold the Alt key or the Option key and let's say we click on the eye of chroma key, only that shows up. Everything else doesn't even show up. You can go back to the main menu by clicking on this arrow. Let's say you're just working with masking right now. You're using a lot of tools inside of it, a lot of features. So you can hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the eye, everything else just disappears and you have like just one masking plugin. Now there's an option to reverse this feature if you like it that way. If you go to the settings of the plugin, if you check this, reverse eye function. Now let's go back by clicking on the gear icon. And right now, if you click on the eye, it takes you to that section and you don't see anything else. Let's go back. If you click on the eye of perspective, it takes you to that and you don't see anything else. Let's go back. However, now if you hold the Alt key or the Option key and let's say we click on Arrangement, Arrangement opens up, everything else closes. If you hold the Alt key or the Option key now and click on Perspective, Perspective opens up and everything else is closed. So it is just the reverse function of holding the Alt key or the Option key. Just learn one of these. If you like going inside of each sections, go to the settings and make sure this is checked. And now when you click on the eye, you go inside of it, everything else doesn't show up. You click on the eye, you go inside of it, everything else doesn't show up. But if you don't like it that way, you wanna see other sections too. In that case, go to the settings and uncheck that so that you don't have to worry about holding the Alt key or the Option key. You just click on the eye and get what you want. You just click on the eye and get whatever you want. I recommend that you watch this section again and try it yourself. It can be a bit tricky, but once you get a hang of it, it can be more convenient for you. Another update is whatever sections you have opened or closed, the plugin remembers that even if you restart Photoshop. So let's say you only use masking and you only have chroma key open. These two are open. And now I'm gonna close Photoshop. Let's right click on Photoshop and quit, right? Now restart Photoshop right in here. Let's see if it remembers that. We are going to open up the same project. There you go. And here's the plugin. Masking is open and chroma key is open. So it is the way you left it. The next new update is very convenient if you want to know and learn what each button or function of the plugin does. And that is, if you hover over anything, it will tell you what it does. Let's say we open up this high res gen fill. If we hover over this, it will tell you what it does. Let's say we hover over this one. It tells you it fills an existing selection tile by tile. It's part of the same tooltips that you have in Photoshop. For example, if we hover the cursor right here, it tells you that this area sets the blending mode for the selected layer. By the way, if you want to turn all of this off or you're not able to see any of this, you need to go to preferences. Let's go to Photoshop, settings, and tools. On Windows, it would be Edit Preferences Tools. Right in here, this is the setting. Show tooltips, let's turn it off, hit OK. Now you're not able to see any of that. And even inside of the plugin, you're not able to see any of that. And again, if you want to turn it on, go to Photoshop, Settings, Tools, and turn this on. Show tooltips, hit OK. And now we are back to seeing what each area does. The next update is all about making smart objects smarter. So here I have a raw photo. Instead of clicking on open, we are going to hold the shift key. This changes to open object and this allows you to open the raw photo as a smart object. So let's click on it. 
Now this gives you the freedom to double click on the thumbnail of the layer, go back and change the settings right here. So let's say we open up the light section and we increase the exposure like this. We hit OK. There you go. Now if you simply wanted to make a copy of the smart object and maybe change something in there, it wouldn't be so simple. If we press Ctrl or Command J, we double click on the thumbnail of the copy and let's say we turn it black and white. Let's click on this button. Hit OK. Both of those turn black and white because both of them have the same source. So how do we make a copy that is a smart object but also separate? Let's go back to how it was. Let's delete this copy. You open up the Piximperfect compositing plugin and inside of layer properties, this is also a free section, free feature. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and then click on Convert to Smart Object. This creates a smart object via copy, which means it's separate. Now if you double click on the thumbnail and even if you turn it to black and white and maybe decrease the exposure, increase the contrast, hit OK, only that changes. Now keep in mind if you don't have the plugin and you want to learn the manual way of doing it, it is simple. Right click on it and choose a new smart object via copy. Now when you do any change right here, change it back to auto, not black and white and increase the exposure way too much, hit OK. It is another separate one. Holding the Alt key or the Option key and clicking on Convert to Smart Object is the exact same as right clicking on the layer and selecting New Smart Object via Copy. But it makes it more convenient. There's more to this button. Now in this composite, we have two main layers. One is the background and one is the subject. And we want to convert both to Smart Object. If we select both of them and right click and choose Convert to Smart Object, they become one. We don't want that. We want those layers to be separately converted to smart objects. And let's say you had like 10 layers. You would have to right click on each layer and select convert to smart object. And for the next one, right click and choose convert to smart object. That would be a tedious process. There's a shortcut for it. Select all the layers that you want to convert separately to smart objects. So let's make a few copies of this one because why not? And we're going to move it all around. One here, the other one there, the other one here. All right, and now let's select all of them. Select the first one, hold the shift key, select the last one in the series, everything is selected. And now hold the control key or the command key and then click on convert to smart object. All of them are now separately converted into a smart object. Convenient, isn't it? Now while we are at it, why not make this composite better? Let's delete all of this. Let's select the background. It needs to be slightly out of focus, right? So let's open up the matching section, scroll down and in here we have tilt shift. The blur needs to start from here and maybe gradually goes till there. Let's add a bit of blur, maybe 16 pixels, hit OK. And it's out of focus. The next update is that the green screen removal has been improved and even if the green has a little more yellow to it, it's more tolerant towards that. So in this case, let us just apply chroma key, click on this one, green screen, click on that one and there you go. It creates a wonderful green screen removal. You can select the subject layer and open up the masking section and let's create a white background by choosing a contrast layer and you can see the masking is pretty darn good. Even if you select gray, there you go. This is pretty good. Now we know that we have two algorithms when it comes to select subject feature. First of all, let us choose the quick selection tool or any of these three tools. The select subject will show up. If we click on it by default, it is happening on your computer. And if you zoom in, it may be accurate, it may not be accurate. There is another algorithm for this. As you can see, it left out a little bit right here. It is not perfect right here. Let's press Ctrl or Command D. Now right next to it, there is an arrow. If you choose cloud, it will now process it in the cloud instead of on your computer. Let's click on select subject. Of course, since it is processing in the cloud, it's going to take a little more time. And as you can see in this case, it is more accurate than the device processing. Now, if you open up the masking section inside the plugin and use any of these features like remove background, separate subject or select subject at the top, you have the option to use cloud or the device. Right now, the cloud is crossed. So if you click on select subject, it will process on device. Press Ctrl or Command D. If you click on it, cloud is activated. If you click on select subject or even remove background, it took a little time, which means that it processed on the cloud. And since it processed on the cloud, have a look, it is exactly the way it is when we did it with the cloud. Now the update here is that when you bring in new elements, you have the option to choose whether you want to use the cloud or the device 
for selecting the subject. If you open up the arrangement section, you can check background removal. If you bring in multiple elements, all of the backgrounds for all of the images will be removed. And then you can choose to use the cloud or the device. If you click on use cloud, it will process them in the cloud. Now let's open a folder, click on this button. So I have opened this folder of fruits. We have different photos of fruits, hit open and automatically they will be opened and the background will be removed using cloud. If the cloud was unchecked, it would use device. And that is why it is taking a little time. There you go, it is done. With all the layers selected, it will be selected by default when you do this action. You can align all of them horizontally or vertically. Makes it easy for arranging later for compositing. The next small update is that you have extended plugin menu. So if you go to plugins, Piximperfect compositing, besides Piximperfect compositing, you have the option to reload the plugin for some reason. If some features don't work or if some button is not working and you want to refresh and reload the plugin, click on that, it reloads the plugin. You have video tutorials. If you click on it, it will take you to the videos I have made in the past on Piximperfect compositing. And then you have more plugins made by Picture Instruments. You know that I made this plugin in collaboration with Picture Instruments. So if you click on it, you'll have more plugins created by them. And then you have this button, which takes you to my website. That's all. And we have a few more minor updates like renaming, improvement in certain functions, bug fixes, and picture instruments have really given their all to make the plugin more robust and stable. If you want the complete list of all of these updates, please check the link in the description. That's all for this video. Thank you for trying out or being a user of Piximperfect Compositing plugin. It really means a lot to me. And if you have still not tried out Piximperfect Compositing, at least do it for the high res gen film. It's a free feature, just get it, just try it, you'll have fun. Now keep in mind this plugin may not be perfect and we heavily rely on your feedback. So keep that coming as well. If you need some support, all of those resources are linked up in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. We're up here.